During the Cold War, when the Iron Curtain divided East and West, the Soviet Union developed a unique approach to tourism. This article explores the intricacies of Soviet tourism, shedding light on how people ventured in and out of the USSR during a time marked by ideological barriers and geopolitical tensions. 1. Soviet Travel Culture State-Sponsored Tourism The Soviet Union, with its centralized control, encouraged state-sponsored tourism. Soviet citizens had the opportunity to participate in organized tours, often orchestrated by Interest, the state travel agency. These tours were meticulously designed to showcase the strengths and achievements of the Soviet system. 2. Outbound Tourism Limited access to the outside world, outbound tourism for Soviet citizens was a relatively restricted affair. The state tightly regulated foreign travel, and only a select few were permitted to venture beyond the Iron Curtain. Those who were allowed often traveled for official purposes, cultural exchanges, or diplomatic missions. 3. In Tourist, Gatekeeper of Soviet Tourism In Tourist played a central role in managing Soviet tourism. The state agency controlled incoming and outgoing travel, acting as a gatekeeper to ensure that interactions with foreigners adhered to the prescribed narrative of Soviet strength and stability. 4. Iron Curtain, Geopolitical Barriers to Travel The geopolitical landscape of the Cold War imposed significant barriers to travel. The Iron Curtain, both physical and metaphorical, symbolized the ideological and political divide between the Eastern Bloc and the Western world. Crossing this boundary required careful navigation and adherence to strict regulations. 5. Inbound Tourism Foreigners in the Soviet Union While outbound tourism for Soviet citizens was limited, the Soviet Union actively welcomed foreign visitors. In tourist organized guided tours for foreigners, carefully curating their experiences to present a positive image of the Soviet way of life. However, these tours were tightly controlled to prevent unsanctioned interactions. 6. Soviet Cities, Showcasing Socialism Soviet tourism aimed to showcase the achievements of socialism. Foreign visitors were taken to carefully selected cities and landmarks often bypassing areas that portrayed the economic challenges or social disparities within the Soviet Union. The goal was to present a utopian image of Soviet life. 7. Citizen Diplomacy Informal interactions Despite the controlled nature of Soviet tourism, there were instances of informal interactions between Soviet citizens and foreign visitors. These encounters, though limited, provided glimpses of cross-cultural exchanges that defied official narratives. 8. Defectors and Espionage High stakes of crossing borders Crossing borders during the Cold War, whether as a tourist or a citizen, carried significant risks. Some individuals took the opportunity to defect, seeking asylum in Western countries. Additionally, espionage activities were not uncommon, heightening the stakes of international travel. 9. Perestroika and Glasnost Opening Borders The late 1980s brought about a shift in Soviet policies with the advent of Perestroika and Glasnost under Mikhail Gorbachev. Borders gradually began to open, and restrictions on travel eased. This period marked a significant turning point for Soviet tourism. 10. Legacy Soviet Tourism in Retrospect Reflecting on the legacy of Soviet tourism, the article considers how these travel dynamics shaped perceptions on both sides of the Iron Curtain. The controlled narrative of state-sponsored tours contrasts with the untold stories of those who experienced life beyond the borders, contributing to a nuanced understanding of Cold War-era interactions. Conclusion Soviet tourism was a complex dance between state control and individual aspirations, navigating geopolitical barriers and ideological divides. Behind the Iron Curtain, the carefully curated experiences for both Soviet citizens and foreign visitors contributed to a unique chapter in the history of global travel, reflecting the challenges and opportunities of the Cold War era. 2-2